Hello. In this video, we are going to cover section 1.1, which is on variation and data. The study of statistics involves two concepts, variation and data. Variation is the idea of difference. In statistics, we study how things differ or how they vary. The idea of variation is illustrated by drawing three circles. If you were to draw three circles by hand, the circles would not be identical. There's variation or difference between the circles. Studying that variation would be a use of statistics. Another example could be heights. People's heights are not all the same. There's variation in people's heights. And so we could go through and we could study that variation. And that would be another example of a use of statistics. Uh, a third example that's in a business context could be studying profits of companies. Profits of companies are not all the same. There's variation in those profits. And so we could go through and study how those profits vary. And that would be another example of a use of statistics. The data are the observations that we record for study. So that could be everything from picture data. So the three drawn circles themselves, the, the pictures of the circles, that is data to lists of numbers or descriptive terms. So in the case of heights, if you had the list of heights, that's the data, all right? If you had profits, the list of profits, that's the data. So the data is the thing that we study in order to go through and figure out how that thing varies. Data always has a context. So even if data is a list of numbers, there has to be a context attached for it to be data. For example, if you saw the following list with no context attached, it's just numbers. Okay, so if you had 10, 9.88, 9.81, there's no other information supplied other than just those numbers. That's not data. That's just a list of numbers. However, if you were to say that those numbers represent the weight in pounds of the 10 heaviest babies in a sample of babies born in North Carolina in 2004, then the numbers become data. Data is everywhere. It's all around us in both professional and personal contexts. The way that you could think about this is that anything that has variation really could be data, and we could study it uh, to see how the thing varies. Examples of professional data could include sales for a business, or the number of students at a group of colleges, or the experimental results for a research institute. So what type of job might you have where you'd study those things? You might study the sales for a business if you were a financial analyst and you were recommending places to invest. You might study the number of students at a group of colleges if you worked for U.S. News and World, World Reports and you wanted to be able to go through and provide that data to prospective students who are thinking about where to go to college. Or for experimental results for a research institute, if you are creating a drug and you wanted to go through and stu study that drug's efficacy, then that may, might be an example of data where you'd go through and do a study. Examples of personal data could be your search history on the internet, your time spent running on the treadmill, your the weight that you lifted at the gym, or even your tweets on Twitter. Uh, why might you study those things? You could study your search history on the internet to see how your search history changes, like what websites you go to on a regular basis. You know, that might represent how your interests have changed. So maybe at one point in time, you are going to ESPN.com regularly. And then at another point in time, you're going to Yahoo Finance regularly. And so you could see how your interests have changed over time. So that could be an example of something that you'd study that's personal. Uh, your time spent running on the treadmill, you, know, you might study that in order to figure out uh, whether you're making improvement over time or to measure yourself against, say, marathon runners to figure out whether you should run a marathon. Um, your tweets on Twitter, you might study that to see how how your tweets have changed over time. Maybe your tweets have gotten longer or shorter, and that could represent something. Uh, so for example, maybe your tweets started off very short and have gotten longer over time. That could represent someone who first gets on Twitter and they're just point, posting short replies to other, piece, other people's tweets. But then maybe that person eventually decides that they want to try and get their own Twitter followers. And so then maybe they start posting longer, more complex thoughts uh, on Twitter to try and generate a following. This course covers the analysis of data. 
So the goal when you analyze data is to be able to summarize the data, which means to describe the, the characteristics of the data and to interpret the data, which means to explain what the data tells us about the real world. So an example of a characteristic of data might be what the typical height of a person is, right? So that would be a characteristic of the data. And an example of how you would interpret that data might be to be able to go through and say something about how rare uh, someone who is six foot seven is. Okay, that would be uh, an explanation that would actually relate to the real world. You know, maybe the six foot seven might be in the context of, you know, figuring out how many people are likely to play in the NBA or something like that. Okay, so the idea is to attach the characteristics of the data to the real world to be able to say something uh, about, you know, that's useful, that's in the real world. Okay, so that is section 1.1. .1. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.